All right, follow me here. One explosion, three women, and way too many secrets to count. According to the cover, everyone lies and everyone hides, and they do it so well in this new novel called The Good Liar. It is written by Catherine McKenzie, who is both a best-selling author and a lawyer, and she joins us this morning with the scoop on her new book, treading that oh-so-fine line between teasing and spoiling. Good morning and <laughs> Good welcome morning. to the studio. Thanks for having me. We were just chatting about the book like this has so many uh, secrets to reveal that it's tricky to talk about and stay away from those possible right. spoilers. Right, yeah. We'll do our best. We'll do our best. We'll figure it out. All right, uh, what is the inspiration of this, of using a national tragedy to run away from life and, and, to, and to hide? Well, I think it's always just one of the things that authors do is we look at events in slightly different ways. And yeah. so it's an idea that I've had for a really long time about would somebody ever use a national tragedy to disappear if they were supposed to be there and they weren't for some reason. Tell me about the moment when that idea came to you. What were you watching? Uh, it was probably what first came to me when I was watching the 9-11 coverage. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember that chain link fence where there were all the pictures of the missing and, you know, the numbers were, they still didn't know because there were people who were supposed to be in the building and yeah. weren't in the building. And I think I sort of had that flash of idea at the time um, and kind of pushed it aside. And then it's just come back over the years and um, eventually some other ideas sort of coalesce together to, to write this book. It also plays into this idea of that society has, that it's very easy for us to lie and very easy for us to construct things about ourselves uh, with these because we move so much right there's not people around that know us from our past right we can put up whatever images we want to tell whatever narrative we want yeah and I think also the idea of it you know the question that I say is if you think if you died suddenly what's the one thing you wouldn't want anyone to find out and something jumps into everyone's mind when I say that and see something jumped into your mind yes but, but it doesn't mean that you're leading some double life or anything. But I think exploring that idea in the book and where does that go? And I like that idea that you just mentioned. Everybody leads somewhat of a double life. Everybody lies. Yeah, well, everyone, I mean, people don't necessarily actively lie to people, but we all have secrets and we all have parts of ourselves that we don't reveal to anyone. Yeah. And I think that's totally normal human nature. And so the idea of the book, or part of the idea of the book is what happens when that gets exploited. I, we should get to the book, uh, it, but it is a fascinating, <laughs> fascinating social commentary. Uh, you have a chapter called One Ending and then another chapter called Another, another Ending. Right. I love that. At one point, one of the characters says, this is your rodeo. We're all just along for the ride, which is really good advice, I think, for the reader. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I hope when I'm taking the reader on a journey that, you know, they'll be surprised by the end, but then they can go back and look and say, okay, that makes sense. You don't want to um, uh, be untruthful to the reader, right? You don't want to just have one of those things where somebody falls off a cliff and it's because you didn't see the guy go out of the car at the last minute, right? It has to, it has to all match up with the story. So I think those two endings show that there's different perspectives on the same events. How much did being a lawyer inform your writing of this book and that idea that people put certain things forward and hold certain things back? Um, I don't think it's necessarily about being a lawyer, though certainly in the profession you do see that people can view two events in completely different ways. You know, two people could have the same conversation and come away and remember different things, and it doesn't mean they're lying about it. It's right. just whatever's important to you is what sticks with you. And that you certainly see that in the legal profession. Aside from secrets, you've also slipped into this book a reference to the tragically hip. Yeah. Are you a fan? Yeah, and also I think, you know, Gord Downey was... Um, had been diagnosed mm -hmm. um, when I was writing the book. So I, I wanted to just um, pay tribute to him a little bit. Yeah. We mentioned that you are a lawyer. You're actually working uh, against uh, Quebec's Bill 62. Correct. Can you talk to us just a little bit briefly about where that stands right now? Sure. So uh, we are getting the case ready to go to a hearing. So there's evidence gathering and filing of expert reports, and that's where we are right now. Uh, that is really heavy stuff. Yeah. Uh, was writing the book a bit of an escape for you? Yeah, it is. A, it's, it's, I have two lives, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is nice to balance out those two things, you know. But it's, it's good to be able to do important things like contest unconstitutional laws, yeah. but then also do have something that's creative, which is right. nice. So good to have you here. Uh, the so book much. is called The Good Liar. You might be a good liar. You should read the book. All right, thanks so much for joining us thanks today. Thanks for having me.